See that? Even the paper has a hard time burning down there. In fact, it just went out and there's really no reason for that. Wow. Now take my word for it, this is a very solid fire at the moment. There's no reason this shouldn't just take off. All this wood is completely dry. Let's just let this camera run and I'll show you what's happening with this fire pit. So we built two steel fire pits about a year ago, two different designs. One of them works, one of them doesn't. You're looking at the one that doesn't work, and the reason it doesn't work is we didn't put any provision for venting below or near the bottom of the fire. I don't know if you can tell, but this thing is entirely smoke and very little heat because the top is the only place that's got enough oxygen to actually burn. So we're going to change that. We're going to either, we're going to cut some holes down towards the bottom. We haven't figured out how we're going to do it, but we're going to get some air into the bottom of this fire pit so it will actually burn. And while we're doing that, we're going to introduce one of the mistakes, one of the obstacles that a lot of beginning welders accidentally set up for themselves. When you're new to welding, you just want to strike an arc on everything. And that's how it should be, right? Because there is no other way to learn, and that is how you get better, in fact. But the problem is, you end up welding and working with materials that are junk, that are old and rusty or covered with paint or dirt, old trailers, old bed frames, old fireplaces, scraps that have been laying out in the dirt for ages, or old concrete stakes even. And yes, all of these are fair game to practice your welding on. In some cases, you can even make some pretty nice stuff out of a junk pile. Problem is, I don't care what you're doing, a beginner needs to taste a little success. You've got to see a good-looking weld every once in a while when you break off the arc and lift your helmet and brush off the slag just to stay motivated. And welding through or over the top of crud can make any welder look like a beginner. Now you probably already know that your steel needs to be as clean as possible and free from rust, ideally, in order to get good welds. You probably also know, however, that it doesn't have to be absolutely perfect, and so the temptation is to get, you know, a 6011 or a 6010 rod, turn the heat up, and power through the rust, just, you know, do it rancher style, because it's really fun to weld, and it's really not fun to grind or wire brush or clean off rust. So most of us just focus on the welding, and deal with the rust as best we can. Only grinding when we absolutely have to because the arc won't start or we can't get a good ground, right? Just keep in mind that learning to weld through rust and dirt is not all there is to learning to weld. So here's my advice. Do this and basically weld anything you can get your hands on. Practice horizontal welds, practice vertical up, vertical down, butt welds, lap welds, fillet welds, practice building things up, practice creating something out of nothing like this fire pit we made, but, and here's the deal, especially right at the beginning as a welder, you've got to buy some brand new steel once in a while, even just small pieces, even just remnants from a steel yard. Clean the mill scale off with a grinder or maybe pickle it in vinegar and make sure you experience what it's like to weld on something clean. You might just be a better welder than you think you are.
And just in case you were wondering, cutting in these vents solved the problem we were having with this little fire pit. And a project like this is a great one for a beginning welder. All right, well, here's a fire pit after the vents, and wow, that definitely solved it. This is the same wood, same level of dryness with these vents, and how does it feel? Good. Who's that? Yeah. So Careful. And we made a video, you know, a couple of years ago when we originally made these fire pits. And I hope you check it out. Thanks for watching Essential Craftsman. And keep up the good work.